both these to destroy my soul and these questions to destroy my career. That's what I need out of the next five minutes of this video. What's up, you beautiful bastards? Hope you're having a fantastic Thursday. I'm Sean Evans, and you're watching Hot Ones. It's the show with hot questions and even hotter wings. And at long last, I'm joined by Philip DeFranco. He's a YouTube juggernaut and new media powerhouse. You know him as the host of the wildly popular Philip DeFranco show. Philly D, welcome to Hot Ones. It's long overdue. Thanks for having me. I, uh, once I sat down and I actually saw it in person rather than on video, I got a little nervous. Before we get started, I do want to say thank you for shouting us out on Today and Awesome for all these years, really. You were on the Hot Ones bandwagon early on. You're a great interviewer, and I like I like seeing people in pain. <laughs> Two of my favorite things, so I'm I'm, I'm down. I'm, it's uh, it is a different experience being here, but I'm I'm ready. All right. So this first one is the humble house. Okay. That's nice. So I start naturally by talking some shop. You've been one of the biggest people on YouTube for a decade strong and therefore have a unique perspective when it comes to YouTube step-by-step -step evolution. What's the biggest difference between a YouTube star in 2018 versus say 2010? Age and accessibility, right? When I was coming up, it was it was definitely 18 to like 45, right? The the biggest guy on YouTube at the time was this this guy, uh, geriatric, 1927. It, it's it's really really old school. Now I go to VidCon and there are 12 year olds that popped off on Musically that are converting over and they're the big thing. And I think that's what ex what's exciting though is they can come in young, hopefully managed properly by parents and and people who mean well. Um, but then, yeah, it's it's a whole new world. But it's also a weird world. Do you remember how you discovered YouTube and what you were watching at the time? Uh, so it was this old uh, old series called Lonely Girl 15. There was this girl that appeared that she was just a vlogger, and then it turned out to be this whole fake soap opera y thing. And then I just kind of fell in love off of YouTube with Talking Heads, thanks to Zay Frank, uh, way way back in the day. And then when he stopped his show, I wanted to make a really bad version of that, <laughs> and I did that for about four years, and then slowly found my my voice. Did the YouTube community do as much whining back then as we do today? Yeah, it was just different. Well, because now we have business issues. Back then, we had site completely doesn't work. I, I'm uploading a video. It's been three days. Like, this thing's not showing up. There were a lot of creators that, that hated that, that Google purchased YouTube. But I was just like, oh, good. <laughs> They're going to have some money. They're going to hopefully be able to figure stuff out. Uh, but yeah, no, it's, it's just less broken. What's one thing that you definitely don't miss about YouTube's formative years? <laughs> uh, I like getting paid now. That's a big plus. I, I did it for several years just as a hobby, just for fun. Uh, didn't make a cent. Was gonna when I was gonna stop doing it back in the day. It was because it was it was killing my grades in college. And then one day YouTube was said, "Hey, we're getting 40 people. We're gonna start paying you guys money." And they're like, "It's gonna be a lot of money." It was not a lot of money. I thought I made a mistake for about two years, uh, but then luckily it's panned out. Yeah, we got this. See, I'm enjoying these. So the state of journalism is something I feel like I could talk to you about all day. And I'll start mm -hmm. with this. Where should people get their news? Everywhere. Um, if you're not comparing and contrasting, you're getting one source. It's one of the reasons why one of my biggest things is I'm giving the facts. I'm also giving you my, my opinion, but it needs to be a jumping off point. I don't want to do a blanket statement, right? I think that there are a lot of people trying their best that, that are maybe working at organizations that don't necessarily care about presenting the full story as much as presenting a narrative. Whether you're looking at mainstream in the sense of Fox News and CNN, all the way to a Breitbart to a Huffington Post. When, whenever you sit down and read, it feels like someone's trying to make you think a thing. If Facebook is suffering from fake news, what's YouTube's corollary? How are Facebook and YouTube different as information delivery systems in your opinion? They're not really. Um, both places, the way they're set up in general, you're, you're getting your news based off an algorithm, right? And it's a problem that YouTube uh, was talking about recently with, uh, with, with videos about conspiracy theories. The algorithm is trying to keep you on site. The algorithm favors you staying here rather than going somewhere else, especially a competitor. So if you are interested in this kind of content, and it might not be true, it might be sensational, it might be crazy, despite what Robert Kinsel says in an interview with Casey Neistat, 
the algorithm right now makes you want to stay there and feeds you more of that same content. So it's really, really important, once again, to go out of your way to try and get information everywhere because if you're getting information based off of an algorithm, you're just going to stay in your bubble. I'm going to enjoy it while I come. <laughs> So with the Philip DeFranco Show, you're essentially publishing an op-ed daily on a number of topics, which is like tiptoeing your way through a cyberspace minefield. When you think about the times that you were totally at odds with the internet, what's the stance, the opinion that left you on an island? I've talked about religion, I've talked about capital punishment, politics. The most hate I, I've ever received was way, way back. Metallica had just, there was like a lawsuit against one of their fans who had downloaded uh, their music and they were, they were suing them. And that was the most outrageous, infuriating thing in the world to me. And I, I'd made this, this big rant and a bunch of people were like, fuck you, they're amazing. When you think back on all the times that you've maybe said something or reported news that upset another major YouTube power player, is there a story that stands out? I don't get excited about the prospect of hurting someone's career or trying to ruin them, right? We're, we're talking about the story. I want to think the best about someone, but I'm going to cover it fairly. As the industry gets bigger, we're going to see more stories like that, especially because we're talking about thousands and thousands of new creators that are getting millions of subscribers, a lot of which don't have proper teams around them, right? To tell them not to do something incredibly stupid, or once they do something incredibly stupid, what to do. And then even too, in this particular space, sometimes you're incentivized to do something 100%. stupid. And then the bar for stupid just keeps getting lower and lower or higher and higher, depending on how you define it. Yeah, I mean, we saw that with pranks. It was escalating normally. Then people started faking pranks to the extreme. Then we saw people doing insane, insane fake pranks. And then some people not realizing those were fake pranks and then doing really serious, insane, illegal shit and then getting arrested. Uh, <laughs> when people talk shit about drama, I'm like, we've, we've seen a worse side of YouTube. Let the YouTubers box each other. I don't care. I think that's really interesting and no one's gonna throw a fake bomb at someone in public. So this next one is the hot one sauce. Okay. So I legally, based off of what I signed, have to say this is amazing. Mm -hmm. This is dope. <laughs> <laughs> So you've discussed cryptocurrencies frequently on your show and back in November tweeted, the trick with Bitcoin is to only invest what could fully destroy you financially and emotionally. Where do you fall on cryptocurrency? Are you smashing the buy, buy, buy button or are you running for the hills? No, 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 no. I, uh, I, uh, I'm personally of the, the same as the, the Mark Cuban belief, right? Uh, it's, it's a new space. It's a crazy space. If you have a 10% that you can throw into a fire and not feel horrible about, I feel like that's the play. Two years ago, right, it was like, it was known by people, but it wasn't known by everybody. When everyone went back uh, last Thanksgiving and their grandma was asking them about cryptocurrency, that's when you know that everything's different, right? And then also when fucking grandma two days later starts giving you like hodl advice, then you're like, okay, this is some crazy shit. I mean, you don't know in general what's gonna happen and I never give advice, but I don't know. I'm, I'm excited anytime anyone's trying to disrupt the way things are. I told you, I'm hungry. <laughs> it's got a little twist or a ting. It has some tang. Something with a T. It's got some wang to it. <laughs> All right, Philly, do we have a recurring mm. segment on our show called Explain That Gram, where we do a deep dive oh, on our Jesus. guest Instagram, pull interesting pictures that need more context. So I'll bust out the laptop on a stool. Thank you very much, Steven. This is dangerous. And I'll show you the picture. This is dangerous. You tell me the bigger story. Does that sound I've been good? On, yeah, I've been on social media for too long, man. <laughs> First things first. Look at that. You say this is your first cheat meal in how long? Like five days. So there, I was kind of okay. I'm at the beginning of it. I just, we were, we were looking at a different picture earlier today and I was just like, oh <laughs> my God. I've just been, I've been throwing myself into videos so much and I focus so much on one thing that I've just, this, <laughs> the whole thing is something that I really haven't taken care of. Listen, eye to eye on that. You know, yeah. when we traded those pictures back and forth on your show, I looked at that and I was like, what the fuck has YouTube done to me? Like, what have these <laughs> wings done to me? Like, I can't outrun it, you mm -hmm. know? It ends up being good because probably without me seeing that footage, I would be completely complacent uh, in my regular PDS camera angle where I look fine. <laughs> but it really hides real life. The idea of me eating wings and then the pressure of the internet, it honestly does keep me doing cardio four or five days a week because I okay. don't ever want the meme to be a thing. I don't ever want people to say the wings caught up to Sean. Like it actually is something that I think about in a very serious way. The internet uh, is not 
is not the nicest of places. But right? that can be kind of a motivating thing. A little bit, but it's also like, bullying's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> bullying's great, right? In my head, I'm like, actually everything good in my life I have because of uh, like a big negative thing or like a, a bully in some aspect. But I, I was like, I, I also don't want that quote out of context where it's like, <laughs> Philip DeFranco supports bullying. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Sean, Sean credits fat shaming for uh, <laughs> keeping his six pack. Extreme korma. Oh, gluten free, good. It's got a little, little tang. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so against my better judgment, I want to take a wing to talk about the political landscape in oh, 2018. Shit. And okay. I say that because the internet freaks the fuck out in the most obnoxious way, even during relatively light discussions. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it can be very polarizing, especially when someone's on Facebook doing fucking all caps crazy opinion. Uh, but as long as you throw out the facts, this is what I personally think. What do you think? Um, some people will see it as a... Uh, it's kind of like a, a, a gimme, like, I don't want, I'm scared. But if we can't talk about things, we can't disagree about something and not fucking hate each other after, I mean, I don't know what we're trying to do. What do you say to those critics? The people that's, I, like, sorry for not trying to fucking shove my opinion down someone's throat. Like, I don't know. In what ways has the most recent election affected your show and the discourse surrounding it? I feel like uh, the election kind of revamped the show. It was, for a while, a thing that I stayed away from, right? It was... It'd be the more lower viewed videos. Um, you'd see kind of discourse, but people not really engaging. But the 2016 election, uh, among other things, got a lot of people caring about politics and sharing their opinion more and more. So I have Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump to thank for my continued career. I feel like I can't talk shit until the next one. <laughs> <laughs> Dance in the sun. It's okay, Philly. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling myself. Mm -hmm. Okay. As someone who's carved out a liminal space between mainstream media and internet culture, I'm curious on your perspective for what happens when the YouTube universe bubbles up. What confuses you? What amuses you? What infuriates you when, say, Logan Paul becomes an international headline? For the reason that he became an international headline, originally, whether it be the suicide video, the tasing a rat after everything, the bragging after he came back from his week vacation with a million new subscribers, that shit pisses me off because I think that unfortunately he is the representative of YouTube to a good number of people. And unfortunately uh, that includes journalists who already had a negative opinion of YouTubers in the first place. Uh, there it is, a little bit. Mm -hmm. I got a little. Little. It's, it's a tingle now, it's not a ting. And it also must be surreal when you become the subject. When that sort of thing happens, are you like, oh hey, my message is getting out there, or do you see it getting muddled in the media meat grinder? It depends on who's doing it, right? There, there are a lot of journalists who will take the story and they'll try and take any quote they can get from you so that you're saying some negative stuff about YouTube, despite what you're talking about is maybe diversification. I've had that done. But then I've seen more and more, whether it be full on mainstream or blogs, taking people seriously. You can have differences of opinion, but it's really hard to argue the numbers. All right, so this next one is the bomb. All right. This is, I, uh, I don't want it to put me in my place, man. I'm feeling so confident. Okay. Attack him. It's got a real tingle. <laughs> Alright. I'm feeling so confident, I'm feeling so confident, I'm feeling so confident. It's welcome. Mmm. Feeling so confident. Oh, it's made a home. <laughs> okay. For a second, I thought you were playing with me. <laughs> Welcome to the Terror Dome. That's good, ma'am. That's good. I don't know why I'm looking like I have fucking electricity coming out of my fingers, but I like it. I like it. Why are you obsessed with MTV's The Challenge? Oh my God. That <laughs> scared I was scared. I was talking <laughs> shit. I don't back it up at all. I don't know why I'm looking like I have fucking electricity coming out of my fingers. 
because they took the concept of Survivor and they're like, what if the same people come back every year and they're just multi-season storylines? I, there's probably a cheaper way to pay for it. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> there's a lot of saliva came into play. <laughs> uh, there's, what we, <laughs> I got this. I got this. Mm -hmm. Die Hard. Is it a Christmas movie or not a Christmas movie? Yes, very stupid question. <laughs> <laughs> it is a constant argument uh, between my wife and I. She is pure, uh, it's not, of course it is. Of course it is. It has everything in play. As a UFC fan, what's your take on these YouTube personalities arranging boxing matches with each other? Why not? I mean, if, if the KSI uh, Logan Paul thing happened and it was UFC or you could take someone down to the ground. Why do I know information about Logan Paul being a fucking wrestler? If you were putting together a YouTube fight card, which two personalities would you want to see duke it out as the main event? I think we'd all win if it was Jake Paul versus Logan Paul. Two men enter, one man leaves. Ooh, and they get the other person's channel, it's over. It's a win-win. All right, so this next one is Mad Dog 357 with number nine plutonium. <laughs> Come on. You're going, you're going the whole thing, right? I'm going wherever you go, Philly. Mm -hmm. That's good. Just let me know my... Mm. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Got this. So you can't do what you do without being comfortable with catching some internet shrapnel, and I'm sure that there are days where your Twitter mentions look like a it's war zone. It's in the zone. stomach, sorry. Which special interest group considers Philly D public enemy number one? It's just the internet, and it's probably a problem that's become so normal to me. The internet in general has normalized just extreme reactions, right? And I'm just like, oh, internet. Oh, internet. I. Did he drink milk? Listen. Why did he, why did he drink milk? Because. I have nothing to prove, all right? Philly, you come in here, you get through it without some milk, your whole team's giving you high fives or whatever. Do this 108 times, all right? And then don't drink the milk, okay? And then raise the ante, all right? But let the record show, are you without water, without milk so yeah. far? I'm trying, I'm trying. Hey, here's the thing. After watching the, the Gabriel Iglesias episode, I watched the Dak Shepard episode. Has anyone ever gone through and not drank anything? It has happened a couple of times. It has really? happened a couple of times. What's never happened on the show as far as the, the, the eating of the wings? You want to set a record of some sort? Well, you know, uh, hey man, you got me out here and, and I feel like I can contribute something to this show and uh, I want to leave a lasting impression and uh, <clears throat> I just want to know what that is. Dak Shepard brought out an extra wing one time on the last wing, but no one's ever brought out two extra wings on the last wing. I feel like, you, we should not have, on a YouTube show, a non-YouTube person have a YouTube record. Wow. So I would like, fuck, I shouldn't say this before I fucking taste it. <laughs> I would like to try and beat his record. I would like to beat his record. <laughs> and I'd like to see, I'd like to witness history. Yes. So this is the last dab. We call it the last dab because it's tradition around here to put a little extra on the last wing. You got that two piece. I just did. I uh, threw a right and followed it up with an uppercut, but I'll stick with it. Oh, there you go. Uh, Going in, a mountain of dab. You know. Here you go, Philly D. Yeah, okay. I don't even mind that it's gonna burn my face off because it's more pleasant at first than the bomb. Mm. I don't know why I'm bouncing like that's where to fucking pull off my stomach. All right, Philly D, here we are at the final stage. 10 scorching hot chicken wings in your belly, mm. not a drop of water or milk to chase it. But before we get you out of here, I just have one more question. I need a rant titled, Why I Hate Costco by Philip DeFranco. No! What is your beef with America's number one warehouse store? 
Oh my god, I've been outed as a Costco hater. You're not uh, the only one with a laptop full of secrets. <laughs> <laughs> There's just a lot of people. And this is gonna make me sound like a big fucking elitist and a, a whatever. I am I am an introvert. I feel uncomfortable around a lot of people, despite there being 15 people around us that are taking pictures right now. And me feeling normal in this situation because there's fucking lights for some reason. But when out in the real world, around thousands of people all at the same time, trying to get to the same thing as me, bad, bad. I talk to the camera, I talk to the world, and then I want to chill with less than 10 people on a day-to-day -day basis. But also, I, I gotta say, the, the only times that I've ever really gone to Costco are on the weekend. So it's just, if, if you've been there, it's a fucking madhouse. I know that Costco, it might freak you out, but you're not scared of some hot chicken wings. No water, no milk. Let the record show. Repping hard for the YouTube crowd. Do we have and now? Do we have extras? I don't I don't mean to mess up your thing. I need I'm not looking for a championship belt. Dom, he's but, doing it for the sport. You got some? Yeah, two. He wants two extra wings. Oh no. Dun 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 dun. I feel like I feel like I should just one second. It's it's a little bit in the face. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit in the face, but it's it's the <laughs> it's the stomach. But I'm gonna have to deal with it anyway. Right. So it's good. It's good. It's not. Mm. Are you still feeling good? Yeah. Let's do one drum, one flat. Okay. Pick them out, Philly uh, dude. But these don't have anything on, right? Nothing. You gotta dress them yourself. All right. All right. Sorry. I know that you don't want your show to be a competition, but this is just how I was built. Listen, it's how you play with the wings. Sometimes also, it says come on, more. You can't have like a skinny guy have that record. That's not fair. You let me know when, what, is that, oh, how, how much? It seems aggressive. I think that that's good. Okay, and then I'll let you do this one. I feel like that's... <laughs> We're good! We're good, Philly We're D. We're good! All right. For the people. For, For the, the people. people. That's what I do. What a showman. Philly D on his victory lap. Clear and wings with the last dab. Caked. I'm American. Mm. I feel almost guilty, but at mm. the same time, not. I know. It's a good. Oh, fuck. <laughs> mm. Flying a little close to the sun. Mmm. But the sun tastes so good. Mm hmm. I'm not crying, I'm just sweating from my eyes. So impressive from this side of the table, and now there's nothing left to do but roll out the red carpet for you, Philly D. This camera, this camera, or this camera, let the people know what you have going on in your life. Uh, if you wanna watch news that is as unbiased as I can possibly try to make it, and then have an opinion to bounce off of, and then you wanna have a conversation in the comments down below, uh, go to youtube.com slash philipdefranco, it's Philip with one L, uh, not Philip with two L's. I don't know who that is. <laughs> Thanks. Good job, Philly D. Good job, Philly D. I am so gonna regret that. The thing is, the face is done. I've killed my taste buds long ago. It's it's the throat stomach situation. <laughs> That's starting to catch up with you a little bit. <laughs> Whew. I love it. Thanks Did for you having, having me. Good time, yeah, yeah. Love you, buddy. Hey, what's going on, Hot Ones fans? It's Sean Evans checking in. If you enjoyed the video, do us a solid. Please subscribe. We're not above begging for clout over here, so you know what to do. Smash that subscribe button with a sledgehammer. Who appreciates you? Me.